Okay, so welcome to part three uh, of this tutorial series. Um, in this video, we're just going to be creating the page that actually lists the errors. So we have our page that like is broken and is creating loads of errors, and we want to be able to display them in the admin page. So this is the page we're going to be creating. At the moment, it does basically nothing, except sort of an empty HTML page. Um, so what we need to do is create a few functions that will sort of get the information and then um, sort of display it a bit, I guess. So going back to our code, um, what we're going to do is define a function in the error logging backend file. Oh, one thing I forgot to do is comment what the function does. Um, that's pretty bad of me actually. Um, it's always quite nice to have a, a one-line comment about what each function does. I find so. Whoops. Um, so um, is used by set error handler to log errors. There you go takes no time at all and now you know what it does when you come back to this in eight years. So for the next function we're going to do, uh, the next function we're going to define, um, we're just going to um, have it, what am I saying, we're going to create a function that fetches all of the errors and returns them as an array. So we're going to call this function fetch errors, we define this now, function uh, fetch errors, it's not going to take any parameters because it's just going to be getting something. Um, before I forget, let's just comment what this does. Fetches all of the errors logged. With too many O's and not enough G's. There we go. So, this function is going to do some SQL again. So we're going to define this SQL variable. And this is going to be a simple select statement. And the columns we want to select are basically the ones we had above. So, error time error type, error string, um, error file, spelled right, and the error line. Then we just need to use the from keyword to tell the MySQL where we want to get this data from. So from errors. Again, just make sure you notice these are back ticks because these are column names and this is the table name so these are also back ticks. Uh, the next thing we need to do is run this query and def uh, store its results so we're going to create a new variable called results and this is going to be equal to mysql query dear, oh dear of the sql variable there we go so that will now run that query and store its results in the result variable so next thing we need to do is define an empty array where we're going to put all of the errors we get from the table. This is just going to be called errors and it's going to be equal to array, which will just set the errors variable equal to an empty array. Now we need to loop over our query result and put, put each of the rows into this array. So we're going to use a while loop here because we might have more than one um, error. So we're going to do while row equals mysql fetch a sock um, result not equal to false. The reason this works um, is because every time you call the MySQL fetch a sock function, it returns the current row and advances the row pointer by one. Um, and once it gets to a point where it can't advance the row pointer by one or can't get the data, it will just return false, um, which means that this check here will become false and the loop will sort of stop basically. Um, so inside here the row variable is going to be defined as each row. So what we're going to do is just add it to the errors array by doing errors two square brackets with nothing in between because that's like how you add something to the end of, array, of an array and then you just do equals the variable like so. And now under here all of the um, errors will be in the array so we just need to return them using the return keyword like so. So now we have a function that um, will sort of return all of the error information all of the information on the error that errors that have happened so what we're going to do is actually use this on the page so we can go to our error list page and in this bit here because it includes the init file it has access to um, this function we've just defined. 
Um, also, kind of unfortunately, it logs its errors um, because that was defined in the init file. I ran into that problem when, while making this, so if my SQL is wrong, we may have a bit of a problem. Because um, it kind of creates a loop of bad stuff, but anyway. Um, so here, we just need to use a loop to get the um, errors and output them. So what we're going to do is use a for each loop because we had it return an array. So we're going to do for each fetch errors as error. And then inside here, the error variable will basically be equal to the row variable from the while loop. So what we can do is end the PHP block and open a new one here. And then we're going to output each error inside a paragraph tag. Um, so we can do uh, well, actually, we're not. We're going to e echo um, each component in inside a span tag inside here, just so we can do the formatting a bit nicer, and to make the PHP opening, closing, and opening a bit less pointless. So what I'm going to do is, uh, well, I'm just going to type out the first one. So we're going to do span, span class equals uh, type, because this is the error type from up here. Sorry, this is the error type, um, like e underscore notice, or it'll actually be eight for now. Um, and I've just defined this to be bold, so this class here corresponds to this span dot type in the CSS. So we just do open a new PHP, PHP block here and do echo error error type. Actually, that's quite bad naming, isn't it? Um, ideally, you wouldn't have the error here because obviously it already relates to an error, but let's not worry about that too much for now. So now we've defined sort of all this stuff. Um, what we should get is a list of the error types that have happened. So if we go to our um, page again and just hit reload, call to undefined error, uh, undefined function fetch errors. Um, apparently I've spelled the function name wrong. Let's see if that's what it was. Do -do -do. Yep, fetch errors, not fetch error. Reload, and you see we get 822, all in bold. So these are the actual values of the error um, error type column. Um, so what we need to do is actually convert these into their sort of con the constant names. So before, do you remember if I did echo of the e underscore notice constant, we got the value eight. We need to convert eight into e underscore notice. And we're actually going to create another function to do this. Um, the reason we don't just store these strings in the database is because one, it takes up more space. And two, um, it's easier to sort of do logic with numbers, and it's also quicker to do logic with numbers because string comparison is quite sort of intensive compared to just comparing numbers because that because that can be done with sort of clever things. I don't really know. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do is create a function that converts like eight into e underscore notice, um, and we're going to make it um, in the error logging sort of backend file because that's the sort of only place it can go. So just under this fetch errors function, we're going to define a new function. And this function is be call, going to be called error constant to name. So we're going to do function error constant con, constant ah constant constant to name. There we go. And this is going to take one parameter and this is going to be the value. So it's going to be like eight or two or any of the other values. So I'm just going to call it value. And what we're going to do in here is define an array of values and names. So what we could do is like do values equals array to set up a new array. We can bring this down a bit as well. And then we have the keys. And remember the little sort of weird pointing symbol, so, uh, that thing. Um, so what we could do is have like eight pointing to e underscore notice. Um, however, we can make this a little bit more flexible because sometimes these error constant values change. Um, so we can actually use the actual error constants here. So we can do e underscore notice points to the constant's name. So yeah, that's basically that. Um, um, and just to save you watching, well, I'll type another one. So we've got e underscore notice. We could also have e underscore error pointing to the e underscore error constant and then a comma here to separate the two. Uh, obviously you do that for as many as you've got. 
and just so you don't have to watch me type these out like over and over again because they're quite a lot um, I've got them in this untitled document so I'm just going to go to this file and I'm going to copy this entire values array like so and paste it here like so so just pretend I've typed all this and it was very boring actually no don't pretend that, pretend I avoided the boring thing and it's all good um, so what we need to do now is get which one of these the value we've passed in is. So remember that this value will either be like 8, which we, which was E notice, or it'll be 2, which was E warning. Um, oh, also I should point out that most of these will never happen. Um, e compile warning um, is basically impossible to get. Um, depreciated could happen. The E underscore user ones are... I don't want to explain them too much, but basically there's a trigger error function which you can use to actually sort of create a PHP error. Um, and e underscore user is used to denote that that's what happened instead of an actual error. Um, but only a few of these will ever get to the error handler. Um, the reason we've defined them all is just to make the function a bit more useful if you ever need it for something else. So what we're going to do down here is, um, well, okay, sorry. Remember that this value um, had like the value of eight, or well, you can sort of replace this with eight. So we can use this as the key to the values array to get the name. If that makes sense. So what we can do is just do return values, and then to spec for the key, we want the value. So I hope that makes sense. If not, then I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, I don't think it's too complicated. It probably makes sense. If it doesn't, you can come on the forum and ask loads of questions and make lots of posts. Forum. Uh, <laughs> shameless plug, sorry. Uh, right. So what we need to do is also comment what this function does, which is converts um, error constant value to name. A bit dodgy, but oh well. So going back to our um, error list page, we need to actually use this function to convert the error type number into the name. So we just call this. Excuse me. So hiccup to there. Uh, so we. <laughs> just call this function uh, on this value because this value is like 8 like you saw on the list of 822 bold um, so we, just, we can just call um, what was it called? error constant to name on this function because this returns the string name it should just be output so we can just do um, well we can just reload the page to test that you can see now we get e underscore notice, e underscore warning, e underscore warning which is a lot more meaningful when you're looking at the error log. You don't want to see like 822. You want to see what type of error has actually occurred. Notice can be not too bothered about. Probably should investigate. Warning, quite serious. Should definitely look at now. That kind of thing. Um, so yeah, the next thing we need to do is obviously add the rest of the information. So we're going to be outputting these in two more um, span tags. Um, so just going back to the untitled document. Um, I've also got the span tags, so you don't have to watch me type those as well. Forward planning, you see. Right, so back to the error list page. Not the wrong file I just opened. <laughs> Whoops. There we go. So now I've just pretend I've just typed these. Um, oops, and not deleted one. So each of these span tags will contain sort of one of the types. And the reason we're just using three spans here, even though they've all got the same spi uh, same style, same style, is that. Um, it adds a bit more flexibility, I guess, for styling, and also it looks better <laughs> in the code. <laughs> so, in the string, we're going to output echo um, error error string. In the file bit, we're going to output the file name echo error error file. And in the line, we have echo error. Oops. Error line. There we go. So now if we reload our li uh, list page again, you can see we get a more complete error message. Uh, and these are obviously just the values from the database. So undefined variable, nothing, which was like the first one. The two substring ones, which I did a bit wrong, um, are the second. So obviously every time you load this page, blah blah blah, loady load, and reload this, more errors will appear. 
Obviously only if it happened. If the page is actually fine, there will be no errors logged. So that's basically our system complete. Um, so yeah, that's actually it. Um, one thing that I might mention is that you may want to use the HTML entities function here, um, but I'm not going to be doing it um, here. Um, as far as I know, there are no PHP errors that potentially could cause like XSS attacks, but if you ever get anything weird happening, you can add HTML entities around this function. It doesn't really cause any harm. Um, you only need to do it for the string and the file because the line is obviously just an integer. We casted it to an integer when we um, logged it. Um, the file is the only other one. And the error type comes from a function that we defined so we know what values we're getting there. But I don't think that's entirely necessary. Feel free to not correct me on that. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, we have now created a function that will log errors to our sort of database and um, then we can display them in our backend file and the user can go on using your site and be none the wiser that it's all broken. <laughs> okay, so yeah, there we go. Obviously you would want this page a bit more sort of styled, a bit more nicely, and also you'd want it password protected, um, hidden from normal people. So yeah, that's basically the end. So I'm not sh really sure why I'm still talking. So thanks for watching and hopefully this was at least vaguely useful.